Hey folks, welcome back to Apex Hours. My name is Mitch Spano and thanks for joining us today. Today we're gonna to be discussing and continuing our, our series on Apex design patterns. During the last discussion, we talked about some of the fundamental foundational topics of object-oriented programming, being encapsulation, polymorphism, and inheritance. We talked about class diagrams and their structures. Uh, and then we started to talk about what are Apex design patterns and what do they do and why should we be interested in them? Today, we're gonna to go over our very first pattern. Our first pattern is called singleton. Now, the singleton pattern is the very easiest one for us to understand, and it's actually a very, very helpful and useful pattern. So singleton, as you can kind of tell by the name, it means that there can only be one. So it's a creational pattern that helps you to instantiate objects in a particular way, but when you use the singleton pattern, it programmatically enforces that there can only ever be one instance of an object within your program's runtime, but everybody shares global access to that object. We like to use the singleton pattern to help improve our application's performance and reduce our memory footprint. Here we have the singleton pattern itself in a class diagram. It's actually pretty simple and straightforward because there's only ever one class within the singleton, uh, the pure singleton pattern implementation. And remember that this line right here is an association. So we read this as the singleton class has a singleton. And that's true. Here we have a private static instance variable called instance that is of type singleton. Then we have a private constructor and a public static method called get instance, which returns that instance variable of the singleton. This is what the, the singleton pattern looks like. So by using the singleton pattern, we can guarantee programmatically that nobody can create a new instance of singleton. The only way to get an instance of singleton is to use this get instance, uh, get instance method. And this get instance method will check to determine if this instance is null. If it is, it'll create it. Otherwise, it will return the existing one. So this is a creational pattern that programmatically enforces that there can only ever be one instance of the singleton class at runtime. So the singleton pattern versus a static instance. Why would you choose one versus the other? They seem very similar at the surface level, but there are some key foundational differences that might help, might help you make your decision between using a static variable or using the singleton pattern itself. So the main difference here is that singletons can implement in interfaces and extend classes where static variables and static methods cannot be used in such a, such a fashion. Uh, also, singletons can be lady, lazy loaded or eagerly instantiated when a statically defined variable must be instantiated at class load. And generally speaking, the singleton pattern follows object-oriented principles a little bit more closely than just using static methods and static variables. Okay, so here we have an example of how we're gonna use a singleton class. So in this particular example, we have an abstract parent class called abstract pick list values. So remember, because the abstract pick list values is an abstract class, we cannot use it directly we must rely upon a child class to extend it and define what does get object type mean before this class can actually be useful. Um, so then we also have this, this protected method called get pick list value, which returns to you a schema pick list entry. So you pass in the field, then you pass in the value, which will be the API name of the pick list value that you're looking for, and it will return to you this pick list entry. All of that is up at the abstract class level. And here we can see that the case pick list values is where we're implementing the singleton pattern. We've got this private instance variable called instance. We've got the private constructor, and then the public static method called get instance, which will return that instance variable. Now, we, we want to do this because it can be computationally expensive to make all of these get describe calls on the object and on all of its fields to construct 
uh, the necessary information to hold all of the pick list entries. So by using the singleton pattern, we can make sure that if somebody ever needs case pick list values, we only ne ever need to perform the, the expensive or computationally intensive task of constructing them from get describe result calls uh, only ever one time. So we can reduce our memory footprint here. So here we are with the abstract value pick list values class. So we can see here that it's got some of those things that were on the class diagram. It's got that pick list field to values and the abstract method for get object type. So the constructor takes and uses that get object type to get all of the fields and populates the pick list to field values map during construction. And if we scroll down just a little bit more, there's a little bit more to this class, and that is that protected method, the get pick list value method itself, which will take and look at the map that was constructed when the instance was created, and it will make sure that the pick list field and the value that are passed into the method itself are actually valid. Then if they are valid, it will return the pick list entry for the given field and the given pick list value API name. So that's our parent abstract class. Now we want to be able to have global access to this. And that's why we're going to use the singleton pattern as we extend this and use this on the case S object. So here is our implementation of the singleton pattern on a class called case pick list values. Now it extends abstract pick list values and we can see all of the hallmarks of the singleton pattern. We've got a private static variable called the instance. We've got a private constructor. Then we've got a public static method called get instance, which lazily instantiates the instance variable and returns it. And here on the, you can see that the get object type method is actually defined where we're saying, hey, we're going to return the case as object type. Now, if we scroll down a little bit more, there's a little bit more to this class. You can see here that we now have these variables called status new. And we're using that get pick list value method that was defined at the parent abstract class to define what this constant status new is. Well, it's the pick list value for case status that has the API name of new. Same thing for type mechanical or type electrical. You can see that we're passing in the the field itself, and then the API name of the pick list value that we want. Once you have all of these values defined, you can do some really cool things with this class in runtime in Apex. For example, you can just call case pick list values dot get instance dot status new dot value. Now keep in mind, status new is a pick list entry. So the value will be the one that we expect. It will be the API name of new. But you'll see that we can also get the label. Or we can also get if it's the default value, the Boolean, true or false, is this the default value for this pick list. And we can do that for the type, say type mechanical value, or type mechanical label, or type mechanical, is it the default value? So that's a little bit about the singleton pattern a very, very useful pattern. Remember, it's a creational pattern, meaning that it defines or it helps us to define how objects at runtime are instantiated. It's got this unique property whereby it enforces programmatically that there can only ever be one instance of an object at runtime. And we use this to make sure that we can perform computationally expensive tasks or share constant values across the entire scope of the Apex transaction in a way that is performant and doesn't blow up our memory usage within the scope of the, of the Apex transaction. So thank you for taking a look at today's session on the singleton pattern. It's an extremely useful pattern. I'm sure you can find a whole bunch of usage for it within your day-to-day -day life as a developer on the Salesforce platform. So stay tuned though, we've got more patterns coming your way and you can only find them here on Apex Hours. So again, my name is Mitch Spano. Thank you for coming and checking out today's episode. Uh, stay tuned and we've got more coming for you.